Testing one, two, all right, we're live. Hi guys, welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. And today, very exciting video as we're gonna be doing a graphics update of No Man's Sky using the HP Reverb G2 as it's been quite a while, about six months since April, I think, that we did a video. And talking about the HP Reverb G2, guys, make sure you're on the bell after you subscribe as HP are sponsoring on the channel a brand new HP Reverb G2 that one of you can watch win and also cyber shoes are sponsoring a brand new pair of cyber shoes that one lucky you can win also and we'll be doing giveaway keys and a whole bunch more so do as i mentioned make sure you enable the bell after you subscribe to look out for that video in your video feed that will explain how to enter in commemoration of the 10,000 subscribers to the channel now there are some pin comments down below sorry there are some timestamps in the pin comments down below in the description and also as i mentioned the pin comments as usual as we usually do in every single video. So let's transition over now to the story about when there was this update. There was back in June, if I'm not wrong. So let me just open up the article. Now, of course, uh, this, you know, this was, uh, this is the article that came out back in June when there was the update. For those who are not familiar or those who don't know, didn't realize there was an update back then, well, yes, there has been. Or if you've been curious about wanting to play the game, well, this is what you need to know. So No Man's Sky Prism update brings DLSS visual overhaul and writable flying pets. So No Man's Sky 2016 just received this Prism update on all support platforms, which includes deep learning, super sampling, DLSS, on compatible NVIDIA GPUs. Right, let me just make it a bit bigger. There we go. There we go. Uh, now available on console, PC, PC VR, and PSVR headsets. Prism is a fairly substantial update to the space-faring game that brings a number of changes that focus on immersion and visual quality. Yes, you can also ride your flying companions creatures. I haven't tried that, but that looks really, really cool to do. I'm gonna try that at some stage. Developer Hello Games says that within the Prism 3.5 update, No Man's Sky has never looked better with, reflect with reflections, new texture effects, more biome detail, improved lighting, new skies, new warp effects, creature fur, and a whole host of more besides. Now, of course, since then, uh, you know, the update would have been even more elaborate than back then. So uh, just FYI about that. Um, so let's just look at the trailer at the time that, you know, what they actually what it actually looked like in their video, because we're going to be doing a comparison side test today, you know, with the HP Reverb G2. I, I actually... Um, you know, use the G2 and filmed inside of the G2 uh, to show you uh, what it would actually look like with an RTX 2070. Uh, it's not a super, it's just a normal one. And also the i7-9700K and Hero Maximus 11 motherboard, okay? So it looks pretty cool. Uh, I mean, on the trailer, it looks pretty nice. I don't know what graphics cards they used. Uh, will it look as smooth, as good, you know, on the recordings I've done? You're just gonna have to watch, uh, you know, further in the video. And there is, by the way, uh, do make sure you watch it till the end of the video because there's also a bonus footage comparing it to another VR headset. Uh, I won't drop any hints, so you just have to watch until the end of the video to see, uh, you know, just to put things in perspective in terms of what it would look like in a, in a less ideal circumstance, let's say. I mean, here it looks very, you know, very nice when they're transitioning over from uh, the ground and then they're starting to fly into space, right? Uh, this I think is the pancake version though. It's the PC version, not the PC VR version that they're showing us uh, right now, but it does look very nice on the PC version. And he's riding his pets there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. I mean, that's a lot of volumetrics there in the, in the trailer, right? So a lot going on. Um, so screen space reflections SSR have been enabled for PC, coming through to PC VR. It's possible it's there already. I just don't know because I didn't see any, uh, you know, uh, any, any specific, uh, you know, options for it. Let me just check that the sound is working. Yes, it is. Um, so it's possible it's there already. Uh, coming through the PC VR, next generation consoles and Xbox One X. Volumetric lighting has been enabled in VR. Okay, that's good. Um, but you can't disable or enable it. I think you can just change the volumetrics and that's it. Light refraction rendering has been enabled for all platforms except VR. It could already be there, who knows? Uh, but again, there's no option to switch it on or off. Fur rendering technology has been added for 
all platforms except Xbox One S and PSVR. It's possible it's been added already uh, since you know June. I don't know. I'd have to go and check whether it's been added or not. As for owners of NVIDIA, NVIDIA, sorry, RTX 20 and 30 graphics cards go, you'll also now be able to enable uh, DLSS when playing No Man's Sky, which goes for VR mode as well. DLSS mixes anti-aliasing and super sampling techniques to improve image detail at high resolution without compromising frame rate. So that's basically that for this. Uh, no Man's Sky joins another few VR titles. Okay, so let's just check this recording as well. Uh, this is a side-by-side -side comparison between uh, 2060 RTX and uh, I think it's a 2060 RTX Super uh, using the native 4K and the DLSS 4K just to give you a little preview. So one of them is running at 70 plus frames per second, which is the native one, I believe. No, it's sorry, the DLSS one. But the DLSS one can run all the way up to 150 uh, frames per second. So it's pretty high uh, on the test. However, the native one can't run at more than 40 or so frames per second or up to 60 frames per second apparently uh, on this specific test. I mean, the graphics look really, really amazing. I mean, this is non-VR, this is a pancake solution, but it does look very cool. So let's see, you know, let's see what it looks like in VR. Uh, let's let's jump into VR now. Uh, do remember the timestamps below in the description and the pinned comments uh, as well. So let me just close this. And we're going to go to the files down here. Here we go. So first, let's do a test now. Uh, let me show you the settings I'm using in Steam. So here I'm in Steam VR. I go to video settings. Now, originally when it loaded, it was quite high. So I bring them down to the HP Reverb G2 settings, which is around 2124 by 2076, because the graphics are 2160 by 2160. So we want to keep them as close as possible to the resolution of the HP when you start off your initial test. You can bump it up slightly later when you're comfortable with your graphics, of course. So No Man's Sky. So uh, then I go to the graphics. So I go here, uh, let me just show you. So I bring it down from 2400 to 2421, wherever I can bring it as close as possible to the resolution of, uh, of, of, of you know, the headset. Then I go to the Windows uh, Mixed Reality icon, I click on it, I go to graphics, and I put it on motion vector to start off with. Because motion vector is pretty good, it does smoothen things out, uh, or you can disable it. So uh, I haven't noticed any noticeable huge differences when you put it on motion vector uh, or disabled. I will show you a test that I did later. So then we launch the game. And then I choose, I'm choosing creative, by the way. Now, one thing that hasn't changed between the previous tests um, is the loading of the screen. I always get choppiness in VR. Uh, you'll see, you'll notice, uh, whatever you see right now is pretty much w the experience that I'm having in VR. I'm recording inside of the VR headset at uh, 1080p, guys, so there is some compression, uh, you know, on the actual um, screen. Then when I disable it, yeah, I do notice a little bit more stutter, I have to admit. But I don't know if the stutter is hugely improved or, or unimproved. Because it feels almost kind of the same. <clears throat> so it's recording my mic, okay. So here we just landed, so there is some stutter when I'm moving a little bit. Okay, I'm going to stop this recording. I'm going to bring you to another recording because uh, it's, a, it's not very smooth. So let's go here. So this is where you just land for the very first time. And the recording is much better because I'm not moving my head so much. And then I'm going to show you the actual options, graphic options that I use in the game before we move forward. So in here, in the general options, I don't really touch it, to be honest with you. It's all as per the app. 
uh, nothing different. If we go to the video options. Uh, again, I don't really touch anything. I just put it to my graphics card. Now the graphics options, these are the optimum graphics settings that I do use for the game. There's only one option that I change and that's the tessellation. So for the texture quality, I leave it on high. Animation quality, I leave it on standard. Shadow quality on standard. Post processing, I put it on high. Reflections, I put it on standard. Volumetrics, I put it on enhance. Terrain tessellation on high or ultra. Both I can put, I can use no problem whatsoever. That is one of the improvements uh, that I've noticed since uh, the upgrade of the game since last April. I wasn't able to use Ultra for tessellation before. Uh, the maximum I could use before was high. And I just, I just, I don't know if you just noticed just now, but basically when I choose, when I choose uh, textures up here, when I put texture quality on Ultra and then I click apply, look what happens. Everything becomes very saturated, very slow. I mean, it's, I just can't put it on Ultra, it's not possible. And I also have terrain tessellation on Ultra as well. And if I have terrain tessellation on high and texture quality on Ultra, I will have the same issue. So here I put it back on high, but I still can't get it back to normal. So I have to put terrain tessellation back on high and now everything's back to normal, no saturating whatsoever. However, when I put a terrain tessellation back on ultra and texture quality on high, I have no issue, no issues either. So here, if I show you the anisotropic filtering, I put it on eight. However, you can put it on two because it doesn't really, really make that huge of a difference. Um, for the, uh, for the GTAO, for the uh, ambient inclusion, sorry, uh, you can put it on normal also. It doesn't generally make that much of a huge difference, to be honest. Uh, for the anti-aliasing DLSS, I switch it on and I put it on quality. Okay, let me go to the next screen. So here we're just looking at the gun. Uh, close up, so as you can see, there's no jagged edges. Everything is smooth, the gun looks clear. Uh, the glove looks slightly blurry, however. Um, you know, but the reflection on the gun is not bad. The refraction of the gun, which is how the light bounces uh, on the gun and the type of shape that the light is taking when it, bounce, when it bounces off the gun is pretty realistic, I have to admit. The ambient inclusion as well is pretty good. So yeah, pretty, pretty awesome in terms of the quality there uh, when it's close up. And then this is a test where we're, when I'm shooting the gun, just to see whether there's any stuttering or, you know, any issues of any kind. And as I'm walking, as you can see, the clouds are really poor. I, I, I don't know how to get crisp and sharp clouds, to be honest. But no issues with the volumetric, the smoke's over there. Uh, there are some lines on the screen. That's the, uh, that's the boundary of the HP Reverb G2. Sorry about that, because my boundary was very close to me. So as you can see at the moment, no issue in stuttering. Everything is smooth. The animal's there. He's doing whatever he wants. Uh, the volumetric there, no issue. The quality's okay. I mean, they, I would say that the, the gameplay is definitely much smoother compared to last April. Um, you know, the graphics are clearer. Everything works much better. But of course, it's not Assassin's Creed. It's not, you know, one of those hyper-realistic kind of games. It's still very 3D, still very gamey, kind of arcade -y kind of look to me. Um, but you know, it's, it's fine for those who don't care about that kind of stuff. But you know, it's like the plants don't look hyper-realistic. They look like twigs that are just moving around. Uh, the rocks lack a lot of detail. Um, the terrain, when you look at it from far away, uh, you know, looks pretty flat. 
So here I'm doing a walking test just to see whether, you know, there's any issues with stutter as I'm walking, as the terrain uncovers itself. And then later I do another test where I travel to another world and, you know, there's a lot more detail in the rocks just to see whether if there is more detail, whether it will create some issues. So, by the way, I'm loading the game. Um, okay, so here I'm going to the options, graphics options. And I believe I'm changing the tessellation of the terrain to ultra. Remember guys, before I wasn't able to do this. This is new. So now we're on ultra and the tessellation. So we have slightly more detail. Now I'm looking at the gloves because I also made a change, by the way. Uh, I changed it to full body suit. You can see the feet, but you can't see it on the footage here. So you're not just seeing the gloves, you're actually seeing the whole arm and you can see your torso and also your feet when you look down inside of the game itself. And as you can see, there is more detail on the rocks, but still no stutter, still going okay. Uh, no issues, the grass is okay. The animation there of the, the animal is, is okay, no issues. There's no graphic issues. Uh, no like uh, jagged edges or anything like that. You know, everything is everything is pretty smooth. And guys, remember to watch until the end of the video because there is some bonus footage using another VR headset just to give you some comparisons between using an HP Reverb G2 and another type of VR headset. So, by the way, I'm using the game for the very first time. It's the first load. Uh, there's no caching down. So everything is actually caching itself, I believe. In terms of frame rate, everything is running at about 70 to 80 frames per second. I can't get it to the full 90 frames per second, unfortunately. I'm not quite sure why. So here I put terrain tessellation back again because um, reprojection is running. So, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure why I can't get it all the way to 90 FPS, but Nothing else is running in the background, no other, uh, you know, no other programs. And then I'm going to do a running test now. Here we go. So now we're going to start running around just to see whether, you know, it creates any issues in the cache when you're running. I can't run completely because, of course, it will, my energy, uh, depletes so I can't run for too long but you can see the graphics start to appear as you're running the plants and the grass and everything starts to uh, come on the screen so I think that's perhaps what also they've done in terms of making it you know run a bit smoothly more smoother is that things take a bit longer to to appear on the screen compared to maybe before you had more detail closer to you it's very possible I'm not quite sure I can't remember But everything is running much smoother. Okay, here we're looking at the ship because before there used to be a lot of jagged edges on the ship and now uh, the ship is much smoother, you know. The quality is much better. It's much smoother. Um, I mean, even though, you know, it's still not hyper-realistic, of course, compared to Star Wars Squadrons when you look at the ship uh, in the, uh, you know, in, inside of the, the hangar, the hangar or the garage, whatever you want to call it. You know, they're not as detailed, for sure. I mean, the ships are not as detailed. Everything is pretty much, you know, low poly as far as I'm concerned and uh, or medium poly, okay, let's say. But at the end of the day, the engines are not fully poly polished. Um, you know, there's a lot of lack of detail, but, you know, at the same time, it helps to render things uh, quicker, faster, and the game is still very, very, um, you know, pleasant to play, very relaxing, very almost meditational, non-confrontational, non not too much stress. It's one of those games you want to play if you want to feel like you want to escape reality a bit and, and even meditate a little bit. Okay, so then we go inside of the cockpit and again before there used to be a lot more jacket edges now uh, It looks much more smooth uh, If I just pause it here for a second, you'll notice here 
the refraction and the reflection of the light is just much more polished than before. And there's no jacket edges on the sides here. Uh, before it was horrible. There was all these jacket edges everywhere. Um, you know, they have done a better job in terms of getting all those things uh, nicely, nicely put together. And the post-processing is much better too. The glow is much better. The animation of the light is much better. It's just what really disturbs me are, you know, the clouds. The clouds just look really horrible. It's just these blob of blurred things there that look really crap. I think they do need to, to do, I don't know. I mean, I understand that maybe the clouds make it harder to load the game as possible. But it just really, I think the clouds is something they need. I'm sure they're working on it. I just hope, you know, they update it a bit better sooner. So here's the test where we take off because just generally uh, would actually eat quite a lot of graphic power uh, and would create the most stutter. Um, so let's take a look at what uh, what's going to be happening there. Let me just fast forward it a bit. Okay, there we go. So now we're starting to move. So there used to be much more stutter before when I was going out. However, there is still some stutter uh, when you when you increase the engine speed. So here I'm just doing a test, shooting some stuff just to see whether uh, you know it creates issues. Now we're increasing the speed of the ship. And as you can see so far, all good. No stuttering, no nothing. The machine can handle it pretty well. And by the way, guys, uh, guys, sometimes I get some issues with uh, my computer just shutting down in the middle of nowhere. And I, I've noticed that it actually happens due to my <clears throat> Norton antivirus when it sends me some updates or some notifications. So if you have a similar issue and you don't know what it is, first of all, I recommend that you update your BIOS if you haven't done that. Um, reinstall all the things you need to reinstall and also just do a test, just switch off your antivirus, see whether you still have the issue. Um, and if you're using Adobe Creative Suite, make sure that you switch it off in your uh, taskbar as well because uh, that might also be one of the issues as to why. Especially if you didn't get your Adobe Creative Suite from the best of places, if you know what I mean. Okay, so here I'm gonna fast forward. So as you can see, still no issues. And then we're gonna go into hyperdrive. Here we go. So let me just click the hyperdrive. Boom, there we go, we're off. Off to the horses, as they say. And again, no issue in hyperdrive, no, no stutter, absolutely fine. I mean, everything looks really good. Much better than before, I have to admit. Just much, much better performance compared to before. Uh, there is, however, some stutter when you arrive on the new planet. You can notice it here uh, because the computer needs to cache the planet. So when I go a bit deeper, further down, uh, you'll notice the computer starts to struggle a little bit. Okay, so this is another hyperdrive test just to double check that everything works and there's no issues whatsoever. I thought I would do a second test on a different planet. So this is the full volume, how you would experience inside. And as I mentioned, there is some slight compression on the video because I'm recording it at 1080p and not a 4K inside of the actual headset. There we go, so we're arriving on the planet and you're gonna see that the computer starts to struggle a little bit because there is a lot of detail and it hasn't been on this planet before. So the computer needs to cache uh, everything basically. There we go, you just saw it there, right? Let me show you again. 
There you go, stutter just there. And do it again so you can see. There you go, stutter just there. Once more. Three, two, one. There you go, stutter just there. So it, it happens occasionally, not too often. Um, but you do get stutter when you arrive on a new planet and you 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 you're at a certain altitude, then yeah, I think it's when the detail starts to appear on the screen. But then you know it's absolutely fine, you can ride, no issues whatsoever. So on this planet, it's actually raining at the moment, so what you can hear now is the rain. It's either rain or it's snow, it's, it's one or the other. But so yeah, no issues as you can tell. Uh, we go closer towards the mountain, so it's a lot more rocky, uh, this world here. As you can tell, a lot more detail, so the computer has to process even more things compared to uh, the test that we did at the very, very beginning of the video where you just landed. Do go to the timestamps below in the pinned comments and description, um, you know, to go back to it to see the difference if you want. But yeah, we're having no issues, no stutter. Everything's okay. I'm just shooting some stuff to see, you know, Yeah, everything is running absolutely smooth, so no issues there. Let's close this one. And here I'm testing the shooting again. So I'm on the planet. We're walking on the planet. As you can tell, no jacket edges. Everything fine on the ship again. Everything's good. Everything cool, as they say. All good. All looking smooth. All looking nice. And then we're going to start to shoot some stuff. And again, even though this planet is uh, more detailed, tessellation here is put on ultra as well. And no issues whatsoever. All good. I can play the game without any problems, without worrying about anything whatsoever. I think here I'm about to jump if I'm not wrong. Get ready for it. Yeah, I'm jumping. So no issues in when jumping either, everything good, everything all right. Um, yeah, just everything runs. At this point in time, it's running smoothly. But do stay until the end of the video because uh, there are more tests coming up and also there is a secret bonus footage using another VR headset uh, that, I'm, that I test out also, just to give you some comparison. But you can see up here, I mean, the clouds look really, really horrible. The gas looks nice, the sky looks great, but the clouds look freaking horrible. If you can get the clouds to look really nice, guys, please leave me a comment in the description below so it can help the community to know how to make them look nice because they look freaking bad, man. I mean, I understand it's the best they can do right now. I get it. No, no, no quarrels about it. No, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just saying it, but it does look bad. The colors look fantastic. The glowing looks great. Um, everything's working really, really nicely. So let me just fast forward a little bit. Everything good. So the next test is the volumetrics. So I go to the video options, I go to the graphics options, I go to volumetric effect, high. But I think I forgot to click apply, uh, however. So here I'm just changing the movement direction to make it world, not head, I don't like it head. And then uh, we, we had the VR vignetting. I did forget to put high for volumetric, however, so... Uh, sorry, I forget to put apply when I chose ultra for volumetrics. So here I'm also doing a test using the teleportation. Just to see whether there's any difference between smooth... Ah, you see there's a little bit of stutter there, so let me just play it for you. One, two, three. Stutter. One, two, three. 
stutter. That's because we have animals. One, two, three, stutter. One, two, three, stutter. And one more time, so it's clear. One, two, three, some stutter there. So uh, it will catch, it will stutter when you have a large group of animals uh, coming towards you. This will happen. But there's no issues on, on the animals. However, I'm not able to ride this animal. I wasn't able to. So maybe it's only specific animals you can fly with. You can only feed it at the moment. So I actually adopted one of the animals. So I'm just teleporting a little bit more, just to test the teleportation again and again and again, just to see whether it creates any effects, any bad effects, uh, compared to when you're using um, smooth uh, locomotion. But so far, so good, so far, okay. And here I adopt the creature. So again, teleportation, no real, no real issues whatsoever. Everything okay. So the next test uh, is walking around in smooth locomotion again. And because this time we're more on a rocky kind of environment, there's a lot more detail around compared to the first, uh, the first world. So I just wanted to see whether, you know, when you're walking around, whether it would actually create some stuttering and all these kind of things as well compared to the first, first time. But I have to say, I have to admit that, you know, I didn't really uh, experience any stutter. Everything was okay. So, so far, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So far, okay. Uh, the terrain, as you can tell, is very detailed. Um, you know, and I'm having no issues whatsoever. Here I'm using my power jetpack jet to climb up. And let me just fast forward to the view. Here we go. And bang, you can see the view now. No issues when I'm up there. No stutter, everything looks cool, everything looks pristine. And then the next test is uh, multiple animals. So how does it, you know, how, how does the game, the computer, the machine react when we're in a pack of a lot of animals? Because this was actually a lot more animals than I had way before with, you know, pretty much almost everything on, on Ultra, sorry, uh, with terrain tessellation on Ultra. But as I mentioned before, texture graphic quality, I can't put it on Ultra, the machine will die. So terrain uh, quality is put on uh, high. That's as much as I can put it, it's high. But you know, it's, it's not bad, it's pretty good. There's no stuttering, the animation of the leaves are good. Uh, and remember, the animation of the leaves are put on standard. So if I put them on enhanced, the motion smoothing will be actually much better. And so here I just wanted to show the graphics. So if you look, you can see all the way to the back. I mean, it's the detail is there, pretty good, uh, higher graphic resolution rendering here, so that's good. It's just the clouds, they really bother me. The, the clouds really kill the immersion for me. If the clouds were slightly better, uh, then I think it would already give more realism to, to the game. Uh, it'd make me feel like I'm more immersed in my, in my surrounding. So you see, I'm taking my jack back, I'm falling pretty fast. No, everything's okay, everything's handled pretty all right. And here we're approaching a uh, one of those things. So let me show you what it's like when I did a video about this. So again, the animation is set on standard. But if we improve the animation, then uh, it will render more frames per second 
uh, and it will be a smoother kind of animation. But the difference is really little anyway. So I, I just put it on standard and I, I don't let the machine, you know, eat up all those extra frames for nothing just because, you know, it might give me somewhat some more realistic performance. But perhaps if you have a 380 or 390, OK, maybe it makes a huge difference. But with an RTX 2070, not that much in terms of graphic quality. So um, I just leave it on standard. And as you can see, it's very smooth. Um, I have to say that when you have the headset on, uh, it looks very 3D. There's a lot of nice depth there, um, almost to the point that you could feel like it's really, really there, you know. All right, so the next, um, the next recording I want to show you, before I show you the bonus footage, uh, basically is if we just go to the previous video that I actually had posted back in on the VR Essentials YouTube channel. Uh, so before, these were pretty much my settings before, like this was pretty much it. Uh, texture quality was actually put on enhanced, post-processing was put on enhanced, and terrain tessellation was put on enhanced. I couldn't even really put it on high back then. Um, it was actually very difficult for me to, 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 you know, to put all of these things. Let me just go to my, make sure it's on HD. I mean, as you can tell, the quality isn't as good at all. Okay, so here I did a test with the Steam VR Repro on, Repro on, okay, at 100%. If we look at the difference today, let me just put that there. Let me bring it out, put it here. Okay, there we go. And then let me bring out the video. Uh, we can go here. Let me just put it side by side to this. I mean, the difference... I mean, I was recording at 1080p here, and you could tell that the difference is pretty much night and day. I mean, it is much clearer here, and the textures are much clearer. So let me just put this back here and then bring this up. There we go. I mean, the difference is pretty night and day to me. There's much more detail. It's much clearer on here. And I recorded at the same exact, you know, frame, frame rate and everything. So. Let me put it next to this one this time. Then let, let's, oh, I don't know what I just did. Okay, and then let me open this. So this is on high now. I mean, again, to me, it's, it's just much, it just looks clearer, cleaner on the left-hand side. Let me just bring it here, there we go. Uh, and also the animation is smoother. There's slightly more jaggedness or jitteriness in the animation uh, on the right-hand side compared to the left-hand side. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not too bad on the right-hand side. Not too bad at all. But uh, yeah, I think it's, it's better now. Uh, so that's basically that. And then if I go to the other video. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I'm going to get flagged for copyright. Oh, I hope not. Uh, okay, so if we go back here and we go to this one, which was the uh, FPS boost. Okay, and then we just click this off and then just show you very quickly let me see if I can find another with the don't say I can but yeah you can see I mean the 
Let me just make sure it's on uh, HD. There we go. I mean, again, you can see how blurry and how qual the quality is really bad. Um, I mean, before it was just, it was clear, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't sharp clear. Uh, and I had to bring all my settings down, really. Um, it was running at the time. The frame rate was about 70. So the frame rate hasn't changed because this is on reprojection. Reprojection is actually on, uh, although CMVR here is at 200. So, um, but the frame rate hasn't really, really changed for me. But as you can tell, in terms of quality before, uh, although it says here it's running at 90, because it reprojections on, so it will show 45, but actually it's running at 90. Uh, but now I'm having a lot of issues. Uh, well, oh, okay, it was running at 90 because we had lowered down the Steam VR to 50%. That's what it was. Um, but now, you know, the quality is just much, much better uh, when compared to before, you know. It's not the play. I mean, you can just tell. It just looks much better than before. Uh, now you can see the volumetric, the fog here, plus this, plus that. I mean, it's just the clouds you need to work on. And then they'll have a really almost perfect game in VR. I mean, that's basically what I would say. So, yeah. So, um... So guys, I'm going to give you some bonus footage now of another VR headset and I will be doing a future video so do make sure you enable the bell after you subscribe comparing that VR headset with the HP Reverb G2 and do a full graphics side by side. But let me just give you some idea as to what it would look like uh, using another VR headset. Can you guess the VR headset? Leave a comment below. Three, two, one, there we go. So, uh, by the way, it, it recorded two eyes when I'm recording in Steam, so it doesn't record one big picture. But I just want to give you some, some ideas So what it looks like when it loads an Android-powered headset streaming wirelessly to the PC. This is streaming wirelessly to the PC. Uh, I'm sitting next to the router because if I'm away from the router with a door in between in another room, there will be some issues. So, so far, and the, the, the quality in my Steam VR is exactly the same uh, as the HP Reverb G2, by the way. So I don't know if you can tell, but basically the graphics are not too bad. I have to admit they're okay, they're not too bad. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, no, I can't. I can't cut the... Okay, so I'll do a post... A post... Uh, a post edit effect, and I'll just render one eye. Um, so basically, what you can see is that the, the quality of the... Ro there is still no uh, jagged edges, by the way, so that's the one first point. No jagged edges. Uh, everything looks super smooth. Um, the detail in the rock is not bad whatsoever. It's pretty good. In the terrain, sorry. The, the clouds are still the clouds. What can I tell you? You know, that's something that, that is there that, that is, um, you know, something you can't really change. So, oh, let me just pause so you can see. So I have texture quality on high, post-processing on high. Uh, terrain tessellation on high and uh, complexity on standard and the rest is all the same. And then I have the full body rendered as well. No difference there. So the biggest difference between these graphics and the HP Reverb G2 graphics, if I just show you very quickly, so this is the gun, right? So let's go to the other files. Gun, gun, gun. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So let's just pause it. And I'm just going to show you. 
there we go. So the difference between PC VR and an Android, an Android powered phone, right? You can definitely tell there's loss in detail there. Basically, because I'm doing this wirelessly, I'm not using a cable to the computer, right? Um, you can definitely see that you get loss you get more compression because all the pixels need to get compressed, right? So all here and all here, you can tell, I mean, the difference is night and day. I'm not using any phone to record through the lens here. This is coming directly from the recording inside of the VR headset. And both recordings are recording at 1080p. So both headsets are compressing the graphics so that I can show you what it looks like inside. However, uh, I'm telling you now that when I'm putting on the VR headset, it looks really similar to this and it looks really similar to that as well. The fact is there are no jacket edges on the gun. The reflections, the reflections, the refractions, the reflections are more or less the same. Uh, everything, as you see, is more or less as you would see in the VR headset. All the compressed stuff around, all this stuff is the same. Everything is more or less the same, guys. Absolutely. So guys, there you got it, there you have it. This is the updated graphics for No Man's Sky using the HP Reverb G2. And also a little bonus footage there from another video that I'll be doing very soon. So do make sure you enable the bell notification where I'll be doing a graphics comparison using an Android powered phone, which is the Pico Neo 3 Pro, but it will be very similar with the uh, Oculus Quest Meta Facebook uh, I, I would have sure I don't know what to call it and of course remember that HP will be sending you one of you you lucky you lucky devils a brand new HP Reverb G2 and someone else another lucky devil a brand new pair of cyber shoes and someone else a probably a $50 voucher to some keys and someone else uh, some keys to uh, some game keys to uh, to other stuff too so that's coming up very shortly very soon so do make sure as I mentioned only will only boy your bell notification so you get notified in your YouTube video feed of that video for the competi competition entry details coming very soon. Until then guys, take it easy. I'll see you in the comments below and in another video very soon. Take it easy guys. Bye.